Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video where today I'm really excited to be experimenting with a new watercolour paint I've bought. This is a tube of Daniel Smith's Extra Fine Watercolour in the shade Moonglow. It's made up of three pigments which are listed on the tube and I'll talk more about those later. It has a light fast rating of 1 which is excellent and though not marked on the tube is classed as being transparent, granulating and to be low staining. The binder by the way is gum arabic. I thought it would be fun to test out these different properties today and then try a whole painting using just this one colour, so I hope you enjoy the video. All of the other materials I'll be using will be listed in the description box along with the reference photo of a moonlit rhino from Pixabay. With any new paint and especially in a monochrome study I always find it helpful to first test the range of values you can get by simply diluting the paint with water. So I start off with the darkest value and add just enough water on my brush to help it flow across the paper and gradually add more and more water until I get to the lightest value, which with watercolour is the white of the paper. I mentioned that there are three pigments in this colour, and they are PG18, which is Viridian Grey, PB29, which is Ultramarine Blue, and PR177, which is Anthroquinone Red. In its very concentrated form, this paint appears a dark purpley grey, but as you add water, you can see the pigments separate out a bit and reveal some pinks and blues from the anthroquinone red and ultramarine blue pigments, which is really pretty. Next, I wanted to see how much granulation occurred with this paint on a larger swatch and test out its transparency, so on this square I drew out a black line with permanent marker. In my Rhino painting, I want to include some clouds, so I'm going to paint another swatch which I'll let dry and then re-wet to see if I can lift up the pigment with a paper towel. Lastly, I was curious to see with this three colour pigment mix what sort of result I'd get by adding salt, so I'm adding a pinch of table salt whilst the paint is still wet. Whilst that's drying, I'm going to try and lift out some clouds. I'm just gently agitating the dry paint a bit with a clean damp brush and lifting up with a paper towel. It leaves a really pretty pink colour but I might be able to lift up more if I don't wait for the paint to dry so that's something I can try out on my painting. With the paint all dry you can see the results. It seems you can achieve a really good range of values with this paint just by varying the amount of water you add and within the range you can see hues of pink, green and blue too. It is transparent, does granulate some and is fairly low staining. Adding salt can also add an interesting effect and some texture to your painting too. So with that all done, let's get on with painting the rhino. I'll include the reference photo on screen which I have adapted a bit for my painting but thought it might be interesting for you guys to see anyway. I'm starting at the top of the painting by pre-wetting the paper and then dropping in paint for the sky. I want to achieve some really soft looking cloud effects for this one so I run a clean damp brush along any paint edges I don't want to soften it out before moving on to the moon. Here again I pre-wet the paper and drop in some random dots of paint this time and let them bleed out into the water, leaving the edge of the moon really crisp and white. Moving on to the rest of the clouds, I wet a section of the paper at a time and start to add a more diluted paint. I thought if I started lighter, I might be able to lift up the pigment easier than I had in my swatches and more effectively get back to the white of the paper for my white fluffy clouds. And it did seem to work really well, but it does mean that I may need to darken up some areas with more layers after these ones have dried. With this layer in though, I next move on to the darker shadow area underneath the rhino in the foreground. I'm working with more concentrated paint here on damp paper, and still keeping the paint edges soft. I 
I also add in a bit more detail to the land behind the rhino before I start on painting the rhino himself. For this I initially switched to a smaller brush as I wanted to go in with a really sharp dark outline to add in some much needed contrast to the painting and really help the rhino to stand out from the background. For detailed areas like this I usually work on dry paper but to fill in the inside of the ear I go back to a larger brush and the wet in wet technique. The inside of the ear needs to be really dark so I use quite a concentrated paint here. I paint in the other ear in the same way but keep the value lighter on this one as the darker inside of the ear is facing the other way. At this stage I also want to paint in the other dark features on the face to help me get my overall values right. I paint in the eye and then the darkest parts of the nostril. Then I begin to paint outwards, adding a light wash of paint to the area in between here. I'm working wet in wet again so I can easily vary the tone just by adding more paint to the wet paper. Next I start to map out some of the darkest areas on the rhino's horn. The horn is quite dark but there are also some bright highlights on it that I need to keep free of paint to add contrast. For the rest of the rhino's body I then continue to work in sections and use a mixture of wet in wet as well as wet in dry techniques to try and make the painting look a bit more interesting. I use the darker more concentrated paint onto dry paper in the skin folds and creases to get sharper more defined lines and a looser less controlled paint application for the areas of skin in between painting onto wet paper and for the lighter, brighter area on the rhino's back where the moonlight is hitting it, I leave some of the white of the paper and use a clean damp brush to lift off some of the paint and soften edges too. I really enjoyed this part of the painting as it was fun to see the different colours emerging as the paint spreads over the surface of the paper and change as I add further layers. Initially I was a bit concerned about the granulation property of the paint as I would normally choose more predictable non-granulating colours but it actually made for some interesting texture, which I think worked well on this rough rhino skin. Now I'm going to paint some more of the darker shadows between the rhino's body and legs. So it's back to more concentrated pigment here and painting onto dry paper to define the outline of the hooves. I begin to paint the front leg, again avoiding the highlight areas, and darken up under the rhino's face. This area was really dark in my reference photo, so I tried to correct my values and add more concentrated paint. And use a paper towel to lift the highlights back out. I move on to the darker shadow area around the foot next and try to go darker from the start to avoid having to add multiple layers. One thing I did learn through this painting was that pigments like this that are low staining are easier to lift up than high staining pigments, but if you want to add multiple layers, you have to be careful not to disturb the layer underneath. It's good for creating clouds and highlights, but I did struggle a bit with this when trying to add another layer to the shadow areas on my painting, and ended up with a bit of a blotchy look, especially on the leg. So I added some salt to try and disguise it, and it helped to add texture to the skin too, so it worked out okay. To minimise this blotchy look though, it's important to make sure your underneath layers are completely dry before adding new ones. You also don't want to add too much water to your next layer, and you should also try to use as few brush strokes as possible with a soft brush, to lessen the chance of reactivating and lifting up your previous layers. I'll obviously have to do a bit more work to get the balance right, but it's all good practice. I then continue to paint the rest of the rhino, frequently looking back at the reference photo to check the general areas of light and dark, and gradually build up the face using layers and lifting. 
I wanted to avoid getting too lost in the intricate details of the skin and was aiming for a looser feel to this piece, so it was really important to get in the right values and add interest through texture. For the rhino's horns, I used the dry brush technique to begin with to help give a rough, uneven and more textured look to the surface, and then I layered over with more concentrated paint to build up the contrast. Then once the face had dried, I could go back and build in some darker values. I love that you can really see the pinker hues here too. I also, carefully, added another layer to the shadow area underneath the rhino and his front leg again. painted a bit more detail to those hooves. With the whole painting dry and any salt brushed off, I took a step back and decided to darken up some of the clouds to balance things out a bit. So I re-wet the paper and added more paint. I still wanted to keep the brightest white, so was careful not to let my paint bleed over these areas. I made a few adjustments to parts of the background. And finished up by adding a few more details to the moon as well. I painted in some small circle shapes and dropped in some darker spots of paint onto the damp paper, as well as some more salt, as I liked how it revealed some of the blue-green colour in the pigment on the rhino's leg. Once that was dry, I added some bright white gel pen to help the moon really glow. And with that, this painting was done. I had a lot of fun experimenting with this one and love the variety of shades and textures you can get from just this one little tube of paint. Let me know in the comments box if you've tried this colour before and what you like to use it for in your paintings. I think it's great for adding interest to clouds and shadows, but you could also use it to mix in with other colours too, as it suggests on Daniel Smith's website. I hope you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you did, and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this one. Also don't forget to hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload. Thank you all so much for watching, have a great weekend, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, bye.